So we can then talk, talk to me about landing, takeoff, altitude, the climbing, whatever you think is appropriate. I think the probably the first thing would be landing. That's probably the hardest thing, right? Or that the one that, it's a bit tricky. Not particularly. Very good. I really wouldn't say it's a tricky aircraft to land. Once you, I mean, my first landing was probably one of the best ones in it. The one thing you need to keep in your head that if it does start to to drift a little bit, just give it a little blast of power. So you get control of and the then, rudder again. Yeah, and just a little straighten up, and it generally tracks really, really straight. I mean, I've landed it in five, six, seven knot crosswinds without having any any issue with it. And you have a skid also. You have no I've wheels. No skid, no brakes. No brakes. There's also. there's a there's a, a little flange on the bottom of the skid to give it a little bit more side to side. That's a good question Stability. too. Because it's pretty big. Yeah, there's like a small knife, I guess, a knife. Yeah, well, it, basically, it's it's a it's a blade with a slot down. The blade was, um, I think, I, I cut it and then put it in a little forge I've got and hammered both sides into the spoon shape. Mm -hmm and pull them together and it's got a piece of three mil steel um, on edge down between the two spoons and that sticks out at the bottom a little bit and in fact yesterday or a couple of days ago um, knowing I was coming here and possibility of crosswind um, I actually built it up with a little bit of weld with the MIG welder and just ground it down to ground it back in again because it had worn down quite a lot very good and actually that that same flange has got a hole this the aircraft is that way it's got a hole in the back of it and I've got a little tow bar and I put a little uh, 316 bolt through it and the tow bar goes down lifts it up and I can put it behind either the truck or it goes behind a little John Deere Gator I and I can pull that. it into the strip I saw that the very yeah, good this is a picture that's right yes yeah. I picture I'll edit some some in right here and we can actually people can see that yeah it works really really well it's got a little two-way spring thing in the, in the tow bar so it, it cushions in both directions that's ridiculous. very Describes cool the design of the skid by the way which is the little spoon with the, that's exactly as it's described on the drawings yeah and it's a 21 but it's not a little less point because you have to use the z21 drawing to uh, to look at the uh, basic philosophy of the whole design yep so landing you say it's not no problem with landing do you no. actually what about the specifics because you have a skid and not a wheel um, would you like better a wheel no wheel i don't think it makes much difference in the initial role it's just the directional control you know and as i say knowing remembering just to give it a little blast of power but generally it tracks very very well i've not had a problem with it um but the thing is, as you said, just keep Again, bursting power yeah, so, you get, so you get authority over the rudder. Well, yeah, but, but you know, maybe only once and not every landing do you need to do it. Very often I'll just land, pull the throttle, or pull the throttle back, land, and then just get to the end. And, and it's not a problem, but if it does start to move, just a, just a short blast of power, just pull it straight and it's, it's not an issue. The hardest thing with it is turning it around on the end of the runway. Yes. You know, you sort of forward stick wedge of power but it's my engine has got quite a lot of thrust on it so probably Lynn, Lynn says it, it works fine you're right and the tire that comes around but mine's got so much thrust it actually picks up speed quite quite quickly but there is an optimum speed on the turn you sort of get it going getting it and then with a certain amount of power you can just keep going around with it and it works quite nicely once you've got the knack but it is a knack you know and well, I guess worst case scenario if you're an amateur you stop you get out you pick up the plane and I, you I have to do that sometimes but it's a, sometimes. It's a really light you just have to pick it up yeah, and yeah. just walk with it yeah yes yeah, yeah. yeah. I, yesterday morning taxiing out because because the wind was in the wrong direction I came up came towards the hedge thought I'll start turning now and it started and it wouldn't go round and I was going for the hedge so I just pulled the power back hopped out lined it up and that happens Lynn says he has to do it every so I often. think it's pretty cool I mean that is a price to pay for having a skid but it's, sounds like a very cool price to pay in my well, it's what's, what's nice about it is sort of there's, there's a level of, of adventure to it exactly there's a level of uncertainty and adventure you never quite know what you're going to finish up with but um, it's great again worst case scenario you just yeah, stop and get up yeah get out but but the actual landing itself i usually put the door down and it flies nicely with the door down uh, with the screen i've got i can use it with or without goggles okay um and it's just sometimes sometimes it'll it'll wheel on sometimes i'll just feel the main wheels and i'll just give it a little bit of forward stick until the speed comes back and just do a bit of a wheeler otherwise you know just just hold it off sometimes it'll do a little bit of a hop but but generally it's, it's fairly 
it's not a big deal. So you like landing on the wheels, not, not a three pointer kind of thing? I don't have a preference, it's just that sometimes sometimes you'll just feel the main wheels just hit first and I'll just give it a little nudge forward just to catch it. it it's, it's, it's either or. I think I wheeled it when I came in here yesterday. I, I, I just, just felt the wheels just kiss first, so I turned it into a wheeler. But it's not a preference. I never specifically go for one and the other. Sometimes it turns out one way and sometimes the other. So it's, it's There's nothing that gives you more control. Because I think that's a problem area, is that it's just the time the transition between you're flying and not flying. Yeah, but I, I don't think the transition is any difference between a wheeler landing and a three-pointer because you're, you know, by the time the tail has come down, it's reached the same point as, as the authority goes whichever way you land it. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't, I don't think there's an awful lot to choose. I, I haven't noticed it anyway. No problem with that. No, no, no not really. No. What about coming in? Lynn keeps saying that he likes the because if you just come in straight, like a Boeing, you just can't see in front of you. He's absolutely right, and it makes it makes the whole thing a little bit easier as well. Not only, I mean, holding it, you know, I come in fairly high, but you can't really see much. But actually, that curved approach makes the whole, including the flare, it makes the whole thing easier somehow. Um, so yes, you're talking about that carrier landing style. Yeah. So just go like in a curve at your yeah. final. I mean, I do quite a tight curve in, you know, maybe only two or three hundred meters, you know, a base leg and just just a long curving base leg and just flare and land. Then you can keep an eye on what's... I didn't the first few landings and then said try and it's actually easier. And it looks it, cooler though. It does look cooler. Yeah, it's just the women like that. Yeah, you yeah, just yeah, come in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can't. I, I'm biting them off now every time I do that. You know, Very they, cool. They come out of the woods and out of the hedges, you know. Yeah, the Corsair guys come to see you and say, yeah, good landing. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it is easy. It's definitely easier visibility wise, but it also seems to make the flare, the whole thing comes together really tidily with Very that good. sort of approach. So, yeah. And also, obviously, there's no aileron on it, so it's slide slipping when you're uh, when you need to drop faster. Um, it does side slip, but there's a, you know there's drag, and you know with the power pack, I very rarely have to to, to side slip it because there's so much drag. Yeah, when, yeah. when there's no power, where you're going yeah, down, you're going down. Yeah. You know, and it's the same. You know, if I was doing the VNE testing a couple of months ago, and actually you're you're really you know it's surprising. It's a biplane. That's yeah. it, so it's dragging. Yeah, it's dragging. Yeah, you have yeah. no choice. No, so um, I probably have side slipped a couple of times, but it's not something you, you don't really need. need you, you really don't need to do it very often. I've side slipped a little bit along the runway when there's a crosswind just to just to keep it keep it in line, but and then just picked it all straight just before it tried. Very good, but it's easy. What about takeoffs? Quick. Okay, do you go fast, slow, or I, richness? At all? I, Any special pointers or? No, I tend to put the stick forward as soon as I start to put the power in. I put the power in, stick forward. The rudder authority is immediate. Immediate. Yeah, yeah. It never, it never wanders off. As soon as you've got the power in, you've got authority over the rudder. Um, the tail comes up quite quickly and just. just but you, but you do push the elevator a bit, so you're trying to raise the. the yeah, I, I put the stick well forward. I get the stick up, I get the tail up as soon as I can. That's it, and that's to give you authority, because or yeah. else the, the skid is just yeah. walking you down, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so you want, the, the plan is to get off, yeah. get the tail off, yeah, yeah. so you actually have lateral control. Yeah, something. yeah. Very good. Yeah, yeah, so stick forward as, as, I, as I increase the power, really. Just get it, get it going. Yeah. So go to flying speed, and slowly um, go up, uh, pick up speed on the ground, slow the ground you, you first. You, I don't know what the pick, what the... The, the peel off speed is you just you know it seems to be going reasonably quick and you just ease it back a little bit give it a little bit of angle of attack and when it's ready it'll just fly off climb out maybe 65 the approach i fly at about 60. the stall is in the mid 40s about 46 i think so climb, the, the approaches will be at 60 the climb out maybe 65 it gives i don't know 900 feet per minute eight or 900 feet yeah, per minute generally. I saw your climb out yesterday. It was awesome. It was good as well. It yeah. was really cool. Yeah. I mean, this RV trying to catch up, and you were like <laughs> out it's climbing. Really it. satisfying. That's good. I'm glad about that. <laughs> good. And I do have both planes. Yeah. I'll edit them right here so oh, you can see okay. it. Okay. Good. Good. I look forward to that. Good. Any pointers you want to add? Uh, 
to, to flitzers that are about to get finished no, or flying? It's, I found it a really easy to aeroplane to fly. As on, my fir on the first flight, um, I've done some fast taxi and I've got the tail up, put it down again, and on the first flight, by the time I got to about 300 feet, I thought, this is just a pussycat. And it really is. It really is a very easy aeroplane. There's a video of this on. Yeah. Yes, yeah. And that's a really cool video because you like playing with the ship and it's, first, it's your first flight yeah. already, eh? Yeah. Very, yeah, very. Well, I went up for, you know, 25 minutes and it was just, you know, what's to worry about? You know, it, it really just handled beautifully. There was no issues on it whatsoever. Very, very good. Yeah. Uh, VNE, what was your VNE? Well, initially it was tested up to 145. Miles? Miles. It's all in miles now. Um, the LAA have given a VNE of 130, so effectively knocking 10% off. So the VNE is 130, but you'd, you know, you'd really struggle to reach VNE. You'd be almost vertical, you know, it really is very steep descent rate. So, you know, the 130 is absolutely fine. And what's your engine in it? It's a UL260 which is, I think it's rated at 97 or 98, uh, 98 horsepower at 3300. Uh, but Rupert supplied the <coughs> propeller, Hercules. Yes. Um, and we were talking about it a lot, and we decided that, you know, if you've got a fast aeroplane, you can move a relatively small amount of air, air really quick, you know, fast. But on a biplane, you want to move a mass of air slowly, because it's never going to go that quick. Mm -hmm. So we reduced the max RPM. I think it's down at 2875 RPM, so we could get a much bigger prop on it. I see. So um, the engine has got a um, uh, Grand Rapids engine monitor on it. Okay. which monitors EGT, CHTs, fuel pressure, mm -hmm. all sorts of stuff. Um, and That's it, really good. Uh, visually, it, it's, it, it, it's kicks a, it kicks a, it kills a bit the, uh, the authentic look, look, but it's so much, that system is really nice, it's right? It's an expensive look. engine, and I'd rather look no, after no. the engine than it be. No, for sure, for sure. And what's nice about that monitor, you can set limits in it, and there's a red, big yes. red light, so if it goes out and it takes you straight to the page, which is great for the um, for the RPM limit. So you know, well, for everything, right? Yeah. You, actually, I know it's for that because it's because we put a, a relatively fine prop on it. It will overspeed quite quickly, whereas you just get this big red light shining. And then you and see you, which one is. You know instantly it's the, it's the <clears throat> RPM, so you just pull it back a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's which a real great system. Which which means that it'll cruise nicely at twenty eight hundred RPM. You're in the you're in the cruise RPM effectively. That so you could run it all day at twenty eight, which gives me you know a good honest hundred miles an hour. A good honest hundred miles an hour. That's awesome. Um, and it's running at that. That engine is giving me probably about sixteen to seventeen liters per hour at that setting. As a comparison on the prototype Z one. I can I get about 92 mph on a good day on a 60 something horsepower engine mm. using again 3000 rpm because the propeller is optimized for that rpm and uh, it's got a good all round performance. Mm. That propeller pitch was 34 inches at the root and 32 inches at the tip, tip by the way. Yeah. And it lost two inches due to an argument about the feel of prop because deer were trying to collide with the airplane on takeoff. But it hasn't made much difference, it's going well. Mm -hmm. Vic, tell me about the actual flying. Turning, uh, are you, you're it's not in the long. aerobatic mode yet, but you're, um, you're, yes, I, you're strong. I am on the test permit, I can aerobatic. On the it test. hasn't got an aerobatic permit, but, but me and Dan are both allowed to aerobatic to, to do an assessment on it. Um, it's very light on the controls, I haven't flown a basic um, um, flitzer. But you know, it really is tiny little movements with the four eight arms. It's it, you know, you just think about it. But it's not oversensitive. It does, you don't think, oh my goodness, where's it going? It's just, it's just very light and and very easy. And you, you know, even at aerobatic speeds, entry speed of maybe 100, 110. You know, it's not a huge heave. It's very light all the way through. Um, hmm. yeah. Nothing. Right. Um, I can't remember what Dan said he was getting. 240 or something? Something like that, I think he said. Yeah. It's fairly fast though. I guess the turn rate, the technical term is, it gets you dizzy real fast. It probably would, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anything else you want to add about flying? There's not and much to say about it. It's just, just a docile, lovely little aeroplane to fly. Just light, sweet, 
and and um, no vices that I found yet. It, it does everything that it should do without without biting. Okay, let's say you have an engine failure. Here we go. Well, that let's go the hard way. Yeah. You have engine failure. Yeah. What would be the thing you yeah, to, to to do to keep it? <laughs> well, you'd need to get the nose down fairly quickly with the amount of drag. But I've, I've always thought that an engine failure with a fairly draggy aircraft is actually relatively simple because you're so, you know, it's so obvious where you're going to go to. You haven't got a long glide, you haven't got a huge number of choices. But and that's because of a biplane, right? Same yeah, with a Tiger Moth. Yeah, you're, a stunt, you're, you're, you can get into almost anywhere. You know, it's, it makes it relatively easy. There's, there's no, no great shakes to it, I think. It'd be alright. You could side slip in almost anywhere, yeah. couldn't you then? I side slipped into a field after having an engine failure in a Z1, and to my amazement, I, I planned to um, arrive over the uh, over the hedge at about, I don't know, 20, 30 feet to get into the field. And it was gliding so well, I was about 100 feet over the, over the hedge, so I had to slip it off very sharply. Yeah. Um, because basically, even though it's a draggy pipeline, uh, the basic thing has got eye struts, which are quite streamlined, the A-frame cabane's quite low drag. Um, it's the draggiest part of the undercarriage, in fact. So, for what it is, it glides quite well. But fairly mm -hmm. steeply, as they all do. Very good. Vic? So you're, you're, thank you very much. You're welcome. <laughs> you think of any other questions, you just forward them. Very good. Thanks, Lynn. Okay, no problem. Listen, uh, Vic. Yeah. Um, yeah.